Hello, everybody. Uh, Lisa Parento here, the president for 2022 for the New England region of the Residential Real Estate Council. Thrilled to death to be here this morning. Um, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, number one. We really appreciate whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this on our YouTube. Um, we know your time is valuable and um, we've tried to continue to bring you some great value from the pandemic and now uh, in the in the space that we're in now. Love to see everybody. And let me first introduce our uh, your next president-elect, Nora Lynch-Smith, who is here today. Oh. Nora, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, Michelle Hagstrom, who is our vi finance co-chair. We've got Christine McClellan, fondly known as our CTO, who's actually the chair of membership, but also kind of our chief technology officer. And, our, and Ann Enos, who is head of special projects and sponsorships and is an amazing um, addition, always an advocate for CRS in general, but certainly for New England region. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to Ann Enos now because our special guest, Don Wilson, I'm so excited for this presentation today. Our special guest, Don Wilson, is a, a close colleague of Ann Enos's. So I'm gonna let her do the introductions. I'm gonna mute myself and look forward to the next 30 minutes. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. So yeah, Donnie Wilson and I have known each other for oh, more than five minutes. And actually he's one of my instructors at the State Association of Realtors in Rhode Island. His uh, presentation today from Prospecting Intelligence is gonna talk to us about embracing uncomfortable change, which God knows we've all experienced that over the last two or three years and more change is coming down the pike. He also talks about creating better constants in life and in profession, and also enjoy new opportunities. So just a little background uh, on Donnie. Uh, he has a bachelor's degree and a master's degree from a Rhode Island University, Bryant University, who's very well known internationally for their accounting program. He entered, uh, after his degrees, he entered into the mortgage industry way back in 1997. Yes, he did start in kindergarten. Now he's with a, a, a mortgage company in Rhode Island um, and he is currently serving as the marketing director. He also does sales training, uh, coaching, um, not only to his peers in the mortgage industry, but to realtors, educators, networking groups and charitable organizations excuse me, in 2018, he launched Prospecting Intelligence, and his passion is helping people embrace uncomfortable change to create better active prospecting habits that produce new opportunities, what our industry is all about. He was also recently appointed as Director of Chapter Education for a very fast growing business networking organization called Networking Group USA. He helps others build relationships that earn new clients by referrals. In 2020, Don released his first book entitled Watch Your Ruby. And there's the culprit sitting right there looking very innocent, but he packs a pretty hefty punch. Don's book is available on Amazon, so check it out. And really, that's simple strategies on your uncomfortable path to new opportunities. This subject also landed him as a speaker for TEDx at Bryant University. Donnie lives by a very, very simple credo. He's taught his three children for all of their years with his family. I try to make a stranger smile every day. So with that, it's my privilege to introduce to you my friend, my mentor, Donnie Wilson. Wow. You set the bar way too high, my friend. I know. You can it's... write me a check later. All right. Deal. So I've got my clock set for 30 minutes. First of all, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much to um, you know the Residential Real Estate Council and to all of you for inviting me today. Anytime I get an opportunity to share what's in this twisted mind of mine uh, with adult humans, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to take you down a different road today. Um, on a topic of emotional intelligence, pretty relevant these days, uh, pretty cutting edge. Um, but I, I'm going to share my screen. I'm, I got to start off today with a quick video. Um, now, 
just the beginning of the video is a little bit loud. So what I'm going to try to do is stop that from happening when I start it. Can you all see my screen? Okay. Um, so it's a little embarrassing what I'm about to show you. And I'm, I'm literally going to go backstage as it plays because it's just a lot for me to watch this. I got to be honest with you. But um, it's relevant, so I have to do it. Try to get past the loud part for you. Okay, ready? Here we go. I think, you know, if, when you look at leaders and you look at what distinguishes a good leader from a great leader, it's emotional intelligence. And Don has very high emotional intelligence. He's very self-aware. He regulates his emotions. He uses humor appropriately. He is motivating. He's empathetic. And he has great interpersonal skills. So those are things that really distinguish a good leader from a great leader and a good speaker from a great speaker. As a trainer, he really understands how adults learn. And so if his message is to transfer knowledge or to teach sales skills or whatever, he really understands how people learn. He's not someone who comes out and performs, although he's very entertaining. <laughs> um, but he's, he's a genuine and authentic person. Enough of that, for the love of God. So, oops, hold what on, guys. I when I made my first million dollars. Why is this doing this to me? It's never done this to me before. All right, here we go. So did you guys hear that? Can someone unmute me and tell, tell me, yes, you heard that? We heard that. Because yeah, I can't, you're, see, you're I can't see any of you on my screen. Yep, you're not muted. You can just change your view to gallery uh, along with the spotlight, but you're not muted. We can yeah, hear Yeah, it's the, the option to change my view is not letting me do it. Okay, well, we're reason. all here and we can hear you. All right, we're good. So obviously you must be thinking like, could you have a bigger ego to show that that is perhaps the most pathetic beginning to a presentation I've ever seen. Um, but there's a reason I'm showing it. So after she sent that to me, and Karen is a very, very important person to me, a very important mentor in my life. And I said to her, you know, God, I don't even know what to say. I, I'm completely humbled by what you shared with me, you know, and wow, emotional intelligence, huh? I have very high emotional intelligence. Awesome. Um, what is that? I literally had no idea what she was talking about at all. And and it made me go, well, what is it about? That, that's the big question. Why do I have it? Is it because I'm an extrovert? Is it because you know I'm an expressive personality profile? I like to try to make people laugh and up, uplift, et cetera. So does that mean if you're not like that, you can't get this? You're out? So that's what made me get into the topic. And then I quickly discovered how relevant it was. So here are my expectations for our little bit of time together today. First of all, am I allowed to have fun? Thumbs up. Yes, I am allowed. All right, Kat, you know, Anne said I could, so. Um, am I allowed to challenge you? I'm trying to see you. Um, okay, because, you know, when I understand CRS, you are, you know, you're accomplished in both experience and education. I should be able to challenge you guys. And if there's something new or a new piece of awareness or an idea that I share today, are you willing to take action? Do I have thumbs again? Yes? All right. So the whoopee, what is that all about? Well, here's where this came from. Uh, being in the mortgage industry for 25 years, that's half my life, quarter of a century. Uh, I've trained a lot of realtors. And on the topic of referrals, it's one of my favorites. Back in 2013, I was in front of a big group and I got on the topic of referrals. And I said, so you tell me if you think I'm asking for referrals. Here we go, magic rectangle, I've got it. Hey, if anyone could ever use my help when you mind passing this card on for me, thank you very much. 70, 80% of the hands always go up and I say, why? And they, well, you passed a card, you asked. And I said, well, with all due respect, I don't think I asked for anything. All I said was, here's my card. 
if you know of someone thousands of years that could use my help, pass that on. And I kind of run and hope that I get a call back someday. And in that moment, the very first time I did this, I said, it's like that movie, Mr. Mom, 1983, where the dad has to sit his little son, Kenny, down because Kenny can't go anywhere without his whoopee. You know, that's a stuffed animal or security blanket you had when you were little. And the conversation goes something like this. He's like, Ken, um, you and dad have to have a man-to-man -man talk here about your whoopee. You know, your whoopee's looking bad, buddy. Now, look, I, I know you little guys, you grow up with your whoopies and all, and they're great. They are, but, but pretty soon, whoopies not enough. You know, you're out on the streets trying to score an electric blanket or maybe even a quilt. And sooner or later, you're strung out on bedspreads, Kenny. That, that, that's serious. And it, it's like one of my favorite father-son moments of all time. Uh, special guest. So here he is. He was purchased for me by my grandmother. The dad was born. That's what he stands for. Those things we know we need to change to improve, but we tend to keep doing what's comfortable, like our whoobies. It gets comfortable to give you a card and run versus saying, who do you, guy, who do you care about that I can help for you today? So keep him in mind. That idea, I, I decided to apply to everything that I learned in business and that turned into this book. What's your whoopee? Simple strategies and your uncomfortable path to new opportunities. So what do you need to change? So I want you to keep that in mind because change is not easy. So I'm gonna go through a few things here. I'm gonna define EQ, why does it matter? I wanna connect it to leadership. And you don't have to be a president of a company or a broker owner to be a leader. We lead buyers and sellers to us as the best solution amongst thousands of options out there. We, um, we are leading people within our networks to us as the best person to work with. It's everywhere. And I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can increase your EQ. So first, let's define it. What is it? Emotional intelligence. Does anyone want to unmute and tell me what they think it means? Go for it. Five seconds. I would imagine it has something to do with self-awareness uh, okay. and ability to be perceptive to any number of um, personality characteristics, traits of anyone that you're dealing with. Very, very well done. Very well done. The ability to identify and manage your own emotions. So what am I feeling right now? And identifying the emotions of someone else to make better decisions and choices while executing important tasks like texts or phone calls or in-person meetings. So well done, very good job. Uh, the four basic emotions, we probably know all of these. Happy, sad, not happy, afraid, four basics. And then we know there's all kinds of mixtures of those four. Check this out. Say PhD over at Yale University, Mark Brackey, researched this for years and years. And he created this matrix based on pleasantness and energy. And at any point, you can put it right up in your workspace and say, how am I right now? Where am I at? Well, pleasant, I'm about a four. Uh, energy, I'm about a seven. So four, seven, I'm irritated. Should I send that text right now? Should I make that call? Maybe there's something I should do before I do that. So why are we even bothering with this topic? Why do I even bring this to the table today? Um, yes, I am an author, but I admittedly am not the biggest reader. But one book I've read many, many times is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. You manage things, you lead people. You lead people. Okay, so that's relevant today in our discussion our discussion. You ever think of someone in your career that really didn't do a very good job of that? I heard a story about someone uh, from a friend of mine who was in an industry, and he would say to all of his managers, if your people don't think you're a jerk, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Believe it or not. And then I know amazing human beings. In fact, this is quite timely. One of those is, is a gentleman by the name of Dave Curry. He's the president 
uh, the mortgage company um, that we started back in uh, 2005. And last week, he won the Leaders and Achievers Award awarded by the Providence Business News. He's one of those people that gets you to outperform yourself, to be a better version of you in many different ways. So if we're going to talk about effective leader, and what does that mean to you? You're leading these people. All of these people can be clients. They could be prospects. They could be network partners, business associates, et cetera. What is really at the center of effective leadership? One word. Anyone want to give it a shot? One word. With those people. It's relationships. Hands down. Quality of your relationships. So we defined emotional intelligence. And now we have to connect this to effective leadership. Let me give you a little bit more data. You want to see a funny video? Look this one up on YouTube. 12 phrases emotionally intelligent people do not use. I'm not going to go through all 12, but I want to give you a few. Why can't you just... Now, as you go through these, they're funny, okay? But people will stop and go, yeah, I said that recently. Or maybe someone said it to them. Here's a couple more. You're going to do what? Now, now, every single one of them have subli subliminal messages worked right in. They're weaved in there, right? You're going to do what? That basically means your idea is stupid. <laughs> or, okay, if that's what you want to think, I just said, probably, I think you're crazy. Well, if you can believe that, maybe you don't make the face. <laughs> Everything is great, right? 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 Low inventory, high rates, inflation. Everything's great, right? So think of those phrases and how that connects to making some big mistakes. If I were to say to you, think of someone in a leadership position that you worked for, okay, that made you feel unheard, unfairly judged, insulted. A lot of people have that person in their mind's eye. They can see them, usually. Um, we don't really have the time to tell the stories today, but I know the story is in your head. You've probably told it many times. I don't want that to be you showing up in someone's mind when someone asks a question. This is the reality TV generation. It started with Survivor and Richard Hatch winning. We all talk, we talk too much. I don't want that to be you. A little bit more data. Can you imagine that they did studies on this topic? Thousands of people over their entire lifetimes and discovering that people with high IQ were surpassed by those with high EQ over 70% of the time more successful careers, live longer and healthier lives, more stable relationships. And in this topic, in this discussion, relationships are at the core of effective leadership. This guy wrote the book on emotional intelligence, Dan Goleman. Actually, that's what his book's called, Emotional Intelligence. The five elements to a higher EQ, according to Dan and all of his research, a little bit more self-knowledge. I think my volunteer mentioned that a little bit earlier. Self-control. All of us tend to think of a time where we didn't have enough. Your motivation. What matters most to you? Why do you do what you do in your business? What motivates you? Social skills. Some have them. Some really need to work on them. But perhaps number one on the list is empathy. I want to show you a very quick video on what I feel is the best explanation of what empathy is. And this woman is brilliant. Adjust your volume so you can hear it. It's not as loud as the other video. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection, 
sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here, and you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, it's bad, uh-huh. Uh, no, you want a sandwich? Um, empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time. Because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. So it's not our job to be everyone's psychiatrist or psychologist, but when you take what I've shared so far and apply that to what the last couple of years of life has been like, it's perhaps more re relevant than my 52 years on this planet. Keep that stuff in mind. Let's talk about executive presence really quick. So I threw a photo of me in here in front of a bunch of college kids. It's very easy to have executive presence in front of college kids. <laughs> uh, you just need a blazer with uh, patches on the elbows. And I had executive presence. But just like this topic, all of us, all of us have access to this. You know, it's things like appearance. You know, it doesn't mean you got to wear a tuxedo, but um, always put together, uh, communicate on a high level, that gravitas people like to be around you for a variety of reasons. Character probably being the number one reason. People always do the right thing. Emotionally, in, uh, uh, someone who's emotionally intelligent as to how they conduct themselves, again, clients, peers, community, it all matters. That's how you can create executive presence. And it's a powerful thing when there's so much competition within an industry, especially in a world where we live in with a very small geographical area. Now, now think of a leader who made you feel appreciated, accepted, empowered. Got him in your noggin? I want your face to show up every time, if possible. This piece about EQ, relationships, center of leadership, you can see how it all goes together. And it's directly linked to our ability to build our business to astronomical levels and teach others how to do it as well. So to improve it, we have to connect feelings to our actions. There's the key. That's what matters because every day we're taking action of all kinds. Is there something you could change, even if it's a little bit uncomfortable for now, around this idea going forward? So let's get into the last section here with about 10 minutes to go, a little less than 10. What can we change to improve our EQ? So let's just acknowledge something first. 
It's a skill set. It's not something someone just has or doesn't have. It's something you can understand better, hopefully after today, something you can practice. If we had time, if we were in person, we could do a bunch of role playing around this topic. Lots of fun. I highly recommend you do it down the road with your teams. Something can change to improve our habits going forward with it. And habits take time to create. So why me? Why did I want to research this and get better at it? Nothing motivates me than those three right there. My oldest, Delaney, who uh, was on American Idol this year. Um, Jocelyn, who's my junior, looking at colleges for soccer now. And my little boy born with heart disease, who is now 13. And I don't know if you guys have one of these. It's a magic wand. It doesn't work for usually, you know, referrals. You got to do some work for those. But don't blink because this happens. Ready? Overnight. And there they are. Everything that matters most to me is always on my board. I change it every year. It evolves as I evolve, but that's why I chose to get better at this. So I'm going to take these four words. They all begin with the letter A. Uh, that's how I put together my strategies uh, around uncomfortable change in my book, because there's all different types of things we try to change about ourselves regarding our business, the way we conduct it, and the way we want to grow it. So these are the four pieces. I'm going to take them and apply them to EQ. Let's start with awareness. Why do I say that? You ever say something and go, why did I say that? Why did I do that? It's about finding your stretch zone because all of us have one. You know, when you're comfortable, you're here and, and no real learning or change happens here. If you go out beyond this area, that's like pure terror if I want to change something. But in here, yeah, a little uncomfortable, but that's a stretch zone. We can discover that. One of the best ways I've ever observed is a disc assessment. If you've had one, you understand what it is. It's a profile of your behavioral style based on four criteria, and you discover where you fall. You also start to learn about others and where they fall. And it's slightly different than EQ, but it's a tool for EQ because it begins with you and learning more about you and also figuring out what your stretch zone is. How far can I go to get a little uncomfortable to change something? But it really begins with your own self-awareness. Is there something you could change? Is there a will be in there for you around this topic of EQ? The next word is acceptance. We all have it. You know, the good, the bad, the not so good about us, the ugly, if you will. Um, being able to accept those things. But around this topic, this is really about self-recognition of where I am and my ability to self-regulate when I need to. There's all kinds of tools you can use when it comes down to self-acceptance and really getting your uh, conscious brain working better and that subconscious part of your brain that just tells your heart to beat, you don't have to think about it, that can be sabotaging you sometimes. Things like this, like guided meditation, a little time every day. Relaxation breathing, EFT, it's called emotional freedom technique, tapping, it's thousands of years old. I thought it was garbage until I learned more about it. Coaching, I have my coach, I also coach. But maybe the biggest thing is just stopping because we're going at a thousand miles an hour, guys. Just stop. I'm still on the parent council at my community school. And even though my kids are long gone from there. And we had a meeting recently and this was on the wall. Okay. So I asked if I could, you know, kindly have a copy of this. It says, think before you speak. Is it T, true? Is it H, helpful? Is it I, inspiring? Is it N, necessary? Is it K, kind? This is for kindergartners and first graders. And the adults probably need it more. Just pause. Is there something there you could change? A to me is all about action. It's all about goals and implementation. But maybe a good goal is to evaluate your existing relationships and maybe set some goals around building better ones. Ask better questions. My two favorites, by the way, why and what else? 
Why is that important to you? What else about that do you feel I should understand so I can better know you and what's important to you? You know, and this applies to clients, it applies to peers, it applies to network partner one-on-ones, all kinds of things. Then you ask better questions and you listen better. You practice empathy, be with people. But my favorite is this one, just stay in the moment. I had a bucket list item happen this year. I've been a golfer since I was a little kid and I want, I'm an only kid and I wanted to take my mom and dad to the masters. We got tickets in 2020 and then lost them and then got them back again. So we went this year. Even if you don't like golf, this was the best experience at any sporting event, the best customer experience I've had ever, including Disney. And I heard people would go to these things to the masters and come back saying, it was just amazing. And they'd go on and on. Now I know why. Cell phones are not allowed in, allowed in the masters. So what happens? People pay attention. The sights, the sounds, the experience. I don't do one-to-one -one meetings with my phone on the table anymore. Nope, not even a factor. I put it away so that I can really focus. Last A word is accountability. The two biggest relationship killers to me are poor expectations and bad communications. The reason you're gonna get one out of five stars in your review is one of those two reasons usually. But when you think of relationships, when you think of accountability at getting better at this, you gotta be accountable for better expectations and better communication. Use the platinum rule, not the golden rule. I'm gonna treat you the way you wanna be treated. That's gonna matter more. But in this discussion today around EQ, get an accountability partner. If you're setting new goals, if there's an awareness piece that happened and you want to teach this to others, don't go through it alone. Do it with someone else. Or maybe that person is a relationship that you want to improve. Be accountable to each other. Maybe there's something you could change there. The reason you see the little pie symbol throughout my entire presentation. My company is called Prospecting Intelligence. So that's the P and the I. But that is a mathematical constant. That's why I made it my logo. My, uh, my logo. And that's really what we're shooting for. Whether it's sales habits or referral and prospecting habits or how we conduct a, whatever the topic may be. Today, emotional intelligence. Make it a habit. Maybe it's the mood meter. Maybe you stop and pause a little bit more. But after 21 days, by the way, that's a myth. After 60 to 90 days, things become habit. So let me throw a wrench into this whole thing walking off today. Yeah, how about 2022? Good times. You guys enjoying it? And you take a discussion like this and go, are you kidding me, dude? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do this year? I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can finish up. This isn't gonna be the last 2022. You know, when I go back in 25 years, I've experienced some crazy things, sold through 9-11, you name it. Um, right now, what do we need more than anything else? Conversations, people who could be a client, were a client, are a client, could refer me a client, and conversation, better conversation with higher EQ skill sets. What does that lead to? Better relationships. And there's a lot of uncontrollables right now we can't control. But as far as I know, all of those houses are still out there. Someone is going to buy one or sell one. We just need to have more conversations. And EQ is relevant to better ones and more of them. And together, we'll create more opportunity together, both within our own organizations and our own companies and outside of them as well. That's what I have for you today. Ending exactly like I started from the bottom of my heart. Uh, with tremendous gratitude. Thank you so much for 30 minutes and uh, means the world to me. Any questions? I am yeah, here. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Don. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, really, really great content. Uh, curious, we, we are over the time, um, but maybe we could entertain one or two quick questions. And if I could ask you, Don, would you put your contact information in the chat now so that we can actually, um, if people want to ask their questions or think of a question later, if you'd be willing to field those. Any questions from the group that was in on um, on the session today?
It does not look like there's any outstanding questions, Don. So thank you so much again. Um, your contact information will be in. And we look forward to seeing everyone on next month's Mastermind Monday. But also, please mark your calendar if you have not for the Summer Soiree. Nora, take it away and give us a couple of quick highlights about the Summer Soiree in August at your beautiful lawn, lawn garden. Great. Thank you so much, Lisa. And Don, thank you for being there last year. I remember speaking with you last year at the garden please party. Come so, as our, please come as our guest for sure, Don. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it will be on Monday, excuse me, wipe that out. This is Monday. It'll be on Wednesday, Wednesday, August 10th. Am I correct on the 10th, Lisa? Just double check because it's gone back and forth, but Wednesday, the 10th from five to seven here in Sherbourne, Massachusetts at 114 Woodland street in Sherbourne. And it's just, if people don't know where Sherbourne is, it's basically right down the street from Natick. So where a lot of G bar events are on Speen Street. It's right down the street. It's right off of Speen Street. Actually, there's a little slice of Sherburn on Speen Street. So there you go. It's not that far away. <laughs> so Route 27 or Route 16 uh, in uh, on 114 Woodland. So we're looking forward. We're having it catered and it'll be really nice and um, hoping for a nice, a little bit cooler day than last year, but with the sun shining. And if not, uh, we still can have it inside. If for some reason the weather's not cooperating, it will be inside or outside, but hopefully outside. So, uh, we'll, yeah. We'll and one of the amazing things is relief fund yeah. is going to be. Uh, yeah, I was going to say one of the one of the most amazing things is that the uh, entire um, event is also a benefit for the Realtor Relief Foundation for 2023. Um, we did that last year as a benefit for the 20, for. Um, the, the anniversary year, and that was suggested by our own Shannon Buss, who is currently on the call, and we're running with that uh, this year as well. Actually, somehow they asked me to be the Massachusetts captain, so I'm really going to, you know, suggest that everyone please um, attend and um, and donate, and even if you can't attend, perhaps you will donate. Realtor Relief Fund has made an amazing difference in the lives of many, many communities. It's not just for realtors, as hopefully so many of you know. So. Um, it, just reach out to any of us if you want more details. And shockingly, you will receive one or 500 emails about <laughs> the event. <laughs> it's all good. We'll, yeah. It's free. It's, we all only ask for a voluntary uh, no. contribution to Realtor Relief Fund. So uh, there is no charge for the event. And there will be raffles. In fact, one of our sponsors, Cutco, is raffling off some of their products. So for people who do donate, there's going to be special raffles. So it's going to be a lot of fun, beautiful afternoon, getting together in person, which we've missed uh, so much. So thank you again, Nora, for offering your beautiful, beautiful garden lawn. Thank you, Ann Enos, for um, inviting and suggesting Don. Thank you, Don, for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing all of you soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care.